calling all barrier breakers. Status quo smashers. World changers. You're not just driven, you're data driven. You know that traditional business is history and that data centric organizations decide the future. You have the vision and guts to make digital transformation happen. You understand that data is the lifeblood of your business and that it becomes more powerful when you tear down walls and unify data across silos and clouds. You aim to master the hybrid cloud world, push customer touch points to the farthest reaches, inspire global teams to innovate, shatter the obstacles of data center performance, and discover opportunity wherever it exists. There's one company who can help you make it all possible. NetApp has a whole new approach to data, so you can align your resources, unleash your data's full potential, and realize your vision. Data visionaries wanted. Okay, good afternoon. Um, my name is Ron Long, and I manage the Hortonworks Alliance for NetApp. And this is Nilesh Bagad. He is a part of our team. And you're probably wondering why, why we are here. And you're probably wondering, like, what, what does NetApp have to do with anything around big data? And what, what's, what's, the, what's the value or what's the connection point? So I want to talk a little bit about that and reflect on what we've heard over the past few days. Because this session is really about enterprise adoption. And then when you start looking at if you're going to put big data analytics in enterprises, there's a lot of different things you have to look at in terms of addressing some of the enterprise concerns. And uh, I know Rob talked at the very beginning about this uh, summit's transformed, transformed this year to go from a Hadoop summit to a DataWorks summit. And some of the things he talked about really was about how do you make big data analytics mission critical? What are the things that you have to consider and look at in an enterprise to have that be part of the whole business process? And um, what's a new or a different approach that you heard uh, over the few days in terms of um, what are companies doing, like we heard customers, what are some of the vendors doing to address that? And you also heard Scott talk a little bit about making enterprise data mission critical is a key part of adoption of big data analytics in the enterprise environment. So you may know NetApp as a storage company or a NAS company, and actually we're, we're more than that. And we, we, we're, we've been transforming. NetApp is really about the software underneath the data management and data um, access. And if you look at kind of where we've come over the past 25 years, and we just celebrated our 25 year anniversary. Over the history of that, we've moved from a data storage, data management company to more of a, a, a data a company that was helping our customers address hybrid cloud. And I think some of the things you see now is uh, when you're putting big data in enterprises, you're dealing with going from on-prem into cloud, into public cloud, and other aspects of that uh, require a different type of uh, design thinking. Right? And we also heard Rob talk a little bit about linear and the aspect of we've designed big data projects around linear regression. Linear regression has been in the industry for a long time. You know, it, it's a, an aspect of what's, what's, what's driving the algorithms. And then he also talked a little bit more about um, the move to parallel. And the move to parallel is, is uh, supported by the fact that you've got more processing power, you've got more ubiquitous access, you've got a lot of things that are going on uh, from a processing standpoint and an access standpoint that are now c capable of moving data analytics much faster and more effective than you ever had before. So if you start thinking about, hmm, maybe that's, maybe that's a, a, a different type of design methodology. And then the other thing we heard is, I think, Almost every customer or every um, vendor and also any other partner was saying, well, cloud's a reality. We're moving to hybrid cloud. Hybrid cloud is part of the environment. It's not just a uh, fad anymore. And you know, some of the things we heard announced from Horton 
was about to get it into the cloud. And we've also heard some things from other partners about how there's a need to have that connection point uh, between on-prem and cloud and hyperscaler. And this is where NetApp's going. NetApp's going into the hybrid cloud. And that's the software aspect about that is how do you do the management and the movement and the uh, accessibility for that data to transverse your hybrid cloud. And that's really what enterprises are, are looking at right now. So, you know, since I've heard a lot also about data-driven has been the theme of the conference. You hear most of the customers and partners put up, we're data-driven, we're data-driven. So this is the, the type of framework we have in NetApp, is a, more of a data-driven framework and data visionary. So we've looked at ways to help our customers, and we've had a lot of enterprise customers move to big data analytics and move into the cloud. And this is kind of what this talk is about. Is that what are those pain points, really? And then how are we helping our customers uh, move to the digital transformation arena? So this is a question you should ask yourself now. Are you linear or are you parallel? And if you look, look at and listen to some of the sessions that have gone on here at the conference, there's a transition between that. There's a transition to being linearly focused, being stepwise focused, and then a transition to parallel. Parallel is more about uh, data-driven, more about um, uh, parallel processing and the other aspects there. And really, I think, you know, listening to the sessions and the conferences, it's more about the data than it is about how you get there. And the data becomes the driver for the aspect of bringing big data analytics into the enterprise. So what about data? Do you know, the characteristics of data are these three things. Data is now distributed. It's not locked in machines anymore. It's all over. Um, the, the, the distribution of data is going across all your mediums. Uh, data is distributed on your your, your mobile devices, on your laptops, in, in your data centers, it's all over. It's no longer a single silo aspect of that. And then also the other aspect is data's dynamic. So it's always moving, always changing, and these are things that the enterprises now have to really figure out how to address and what to do about that. And then your other piece is data's diverse. So there's no longer one single version of the truth, there's unformatted data, unstructured data, data locked in repositories, data locked in data warehouses, but it's, it's all over the place. And when we listen to our customers and our methodologies to start addressing big data analytics, you're addressing these three things. You're addressing unifying the diversity and the dynamic and the distributed aspect of data. And this is what we're thinking about really at NetApp when we talk to our customers and talk to our partners, how do you manage that environment? So let's talk more about enterprise data. Enterprise data has some specific requirements. Enterprise data first has to be secure. The enterprises have to have that in their business environment in order to go forward. Uh, security means data protection. It means secure access. It means policy driven. It means locked away for compliance. It may mean locked away for um, years or for archiving or what have you, but the enterprises have to have their data secure. And you hear that all over the place. That's really hitting the, an enterprise data element. And then the other one is easy. It's gotta be easy to use and easy to access. You have multiple devices. You have multiple applications. You've got multiple ways to get to this data. And, and if it's not easy to access, then it's not going to be adopted by your users or in the enterprise. And it's a really key thing that our customers are looking at is the ease of use. And the other one is freedom. And that means freedom to move. And freedom to move means be able to move, like we said, on-prem, in cloud, out of cloud, on devices, off devices, different formats. You have to have that aspect of data freedom in order for your users to start using the data and the enterprise has to have that as they go to digital transformation. And if you look at where enterprises are going from a DXC standpoint, this data freedom becomes a key part. 
they'll start in maybe a hyperscaler, and then they'll move to a prem or they'll move to cloud, but they have to have that data freedom to move uh, back and forth. And then the final one really is relevance. And I know we talked about that. I think the gentleman from um, one of the partners here at scale talked about the fact that only 1% of the data that's generated is actually used. And there's so much data that's out there that has so much more relevance. And the aspect of what the people here in the groups are doing is you're creating a way for enterprises to gain relevance out of that data, but still maintain the aspects of security, ease of use, and freedom. So when you start looking at that from an enterprise, these are tenets that, I, that we see our customers and our partners say we have to address those all around to move from uh, distributed unmanaged data to enterprise data. So what does that mean? There are enterprise customer pain points. And this is when we talk to our large customers. They say, I want to move to big data analytics, but there's, there's some things that are preventing me from doing that effectively. And one of them is <clears throat> managing complexity. Um, when you start looking at all the environments that are in the enterprise and outside the enterprise, when they start, the data get, starts getting more diverse and more dynamic and more free to move, then you inject a, le a level of complexity. And Horton's done a good job in terms of taking the Ambari interface and making that a way to help manage complexity from that standpoint in the big data environment. And this is a key thing that the enterprises have to really understand and work on in order to have a, uh, a, a clean, clear data analytics environment. And then the other piece is data movement and replication. Um, that's a big pain point. And when you talk to enterprise customers, they have multiple copies of the data. And sometimes that means multiple versions of the truth. And they're trying to get to single versions of the truth. And they feel like, well, I have to move the data from my data warehouse over to the system. And then I have to make three copies of it. And then I have to replicate it in this system. And if I want to have these two projects work together, I have to have a way to manage that data movement and replication. That's a key enterprise pain point for some of the customers that you'll be serving in terms of putting big data in the enterprise. And the last one really is cloud integration. And this is becoming more and more and more key in terms of an aspect. So you know, the big data environment started with pet projects or projects in particular areas or just kind of sandbox experiments. And then they also started in the cloud too, other places. And they also started on people's PCs underneath their desks. So when you looked at, I want to use the capability that sits in the environment now, in the market now, you, you go to the cloud. And you see that Horton and others have cloud offers. Customers can try stuff in the cloud. They can get going in the cloud. But you've got to have the way to do that cloud integration. And that means don't just move to the cloud and stay there. That means a way to access the data back, or to have the access in between those technologies, or to have the freedom to, when you outgrow one, move to the other or when you have projects that are across those environments, be able to have the, those integrated together. So let's look at it linear, okay? This is the way big data has really uh, come to be. Start out with a project, and start off with a cluster of nodes. And you know, it may be one project within uh, a company. And let's say, let's say if it's a, a water management company, it may be a, a, a project around um, uh, water flow or water management. And, and what typically has happened is these projects have spun up in companies. And when you go talk to these uh, customers, you'll see, well, we've got big data over here. We have another project where we're using big data over here. Um, we may have a third project that's spinning up in another area, another business. Because when you're talking to enterprise customers, these big data environments get spread out. Or we may have another one. Now, see, you're, you're going for a linear type of environment. You're going one, two, three, four. And this is more stepwise and really kind of siloed and pigeonholed. And then you do have the cap And then some of them start in the cloud. And typically, in a linear scenario, it looks like this. That means you, you have the ability, ab ability to communicate between the nodes and the clusters, but the data are isolated. And when you have that, then you have that enterprise pain point of, it's too complex. Um, I can't really manage data movement and replication effectively. And if I'm in the cloud, I'm stuck. 
So if you look at those things in terms of what are the pain points, this linear is creating those pain points. So if you look at another way, I think a lot of the data scientists and a lot of the, uh, the partners and customers are looking at, they're saying there's another scenario, and it's parallel. So you start off with the same project, but instead of isolating that data to a particular cluster, you look at a way to put it into an area where it may be more shared, or a way that you have the data separated from your node, but you still have the performance and access, but you've got a way to manage that data, and you also have a way to move that data in between those other two silos. And as you continue to grow the projects and continue to uh, spin up these data projects, you may have data that one particular project could have access and need for, and now it's next to it. You have the ability to look at it. You can do the correlations. You can do the extractions. You can do more of the uh, analytics if you've got those data silos more together. And if you keep going, and you take a look at, this is more of a parallel type of a methodology. What am I solving here? This is less complex. Um, I have less data movement and replication. I've got the ability to get to those data pieces when I need it. I can leverage the data projects and the, the data analytics projects in those particular areas. And then if I put something in cloud, I want to be able to put that data in the cloud, but be able to get it back and to be able to uh, access and move that data in your enterprise environment. And this is really what NetApp's focus is right now. Our focus is helping enterprises do this. And what we, we've got as part of an offer, it's a portfolio offer, it's not just a, a storage device, it's software that we're calling the data fabric. And the data fabric is a portfolio of software pieces and products that allow customers and enterprises to take advantage of this. So they're not locked in, they have the cloud integration, and they have the complexity management taken care of. And when you're going and talking to your customers and your enterprise environments around how do I put big data into these shared environments, you are talking to more of a parallel scenario because you've got the capability and the processing power to do this. You've got the storage and data access capability that wasn't there before. You've got the cloud in terms of access that wasn't there before. And enterprises that are looking at this are going, well, this is more of a framework that I can live with. So I know uh, that the guy from BMC talked about when you begin to um, code your data, you put the data management at the very beginning. You don't put the data, manage, the data in and then try to manage it later. And if you look at taking more of a data-driven approach, you're thinking about where is the data going to be or where does the data exist now? So when we have that type of an approach, you don't have to move data as much, and you can take advantage of the, uh, um, the archive and the repositories of data too. So you know another good thing that Horton did was the partnership with IBM, right? So you can talk, where's the data in IBM mainframes? Well, it's, it's all over. And I think the gentleman said 90% of the data in the enterprise is on mainframes. That data's not gonna move off the mainframe. You have to have a way to move that, to have that data access and, and not have to do all this data movement and replication. This is what enterprises are gonna be asking you about and asking your developers and asking you as um, uh, data scientists, how do I do this? I, you can probably tell me how I could do data analytics correlation algorithms, uh, a lot of it, but you go, okay, what do I need to think about from a parallel standpoint uh, to structure a scenario that gets you to this method or this mode. So if you look at uh, the data fabric, uh, this is a better picture of, it's really a way to integrate enterprise IT with next generation data centers. Those are the soft centers, everything's gonna be, so, everything's software defined, and with public and, and multi-clouds. And what NetApp's done is basically we've unbundled our software so it can go across these environments, and that's data management and data access software. We have the software in the hyperscalers. So for example, in Microsoft Azure or AWS, there's Cloud on Tap, which is our access software in those environments. And then we've allowed that software to scale up and down. So you've got an enterprise, they may have a, a lot of data, data elements that's being managed by our NetApp software. 
And then you may have some edge, edge type of environments that are managed that same way, and it scales all the way from a small up to a large. And our strategy really is to become the data authority for the hybrid cloud. And what, what, what that means is in this hybrid cloud environment, now you have the ability to manage the complexity by using the software and the pieces that we, we have in place and we're working with our enterprise customers on. You also take care of data movement and replication. In the NetApp software, there's deduplication and there's replication built into that stack, into that uh, storage OS stack. So that's taken away from as a complexity. And then what I just talked about a minute ago is you have cloud integration. Uh, our, our cloud on tap software is running in IBM software. It's running in CenturyLink. It's running in Azure and AWS. And these are access points for uh, helping the enterprises address these three challenges. So I want to go a little deeper, and I'm going to ask my colleague Nilesh to talk about some of the aspects that we have architectures for data analytics and what are some of the pieces that enable you to do so? Thanks, Ron. So, hello everybody, I'm Nilesh. I lead product management for big data analytics uh, at NetApp. Uh, and I'll just go a little deeper as Ron mentioned on some of the technology that we build to address the customer problems that uh, Ron just mentioned. Uh, so, Data Fabric is our architecture and vision for hybrid cloud because what we are seeing in our customer base is that more and more customers are doing analytics in the hybrid cloud fashion. Uh, so at, at the core of uh, our architecture is our operating system, we call it ONTAP, uh, that has very rich data management features like dedupe, uh, uh, replication, uh, things like uh, uh, snapshot, clones. So uh, when customer put data uh, on ONTAP, uh, then they can do uh, all these uh, features, they can run all these features on the data. One of the new feature we recently introduced where we auto tier the data that is on ONTAP uh, to an object store. So uh, if your data is not analyzed for a while, we move it to a cheaper storage and only hot data is stored on more expensive storage uh, like all flash. Uh, now the one, one good thing is that the same operating system you can either run on premises or you can run uh, it in, in a colo facility like Equinix, which is very close to a uh, public cloud. And in that case, you control your data, but you can just use compute from a public cloud. Uh, so this architecture allows you the flexibility that you can either run on premises or you can run very close to the cloud and use the compute from the cloud. But then you can also move the data between on premises and the uh, Colo facility like Equinix, that way uh, uh, if you want to analyze only subset of your data in cloud, you can just move that data from on-premises to cloud using our snap mirror functionality. Uh, and again, this is very uh, optimized way of moving data from on-premises to, uh, uh, to cloud. Not cloud, but uh, Colo facility. Uh, another thing is that the same operating system uh, can also run in Amazon. So you can actually move the data uh, uh, to cloud and start uh, getting all those uh, advantages of ONTAP in the cloud. Uh, but also like what we found that some of our customers want their data in the cloud in the object format like S3. So for those applications, we have introduced a new service, we call it Cloud Sync, where even if you're ingesting your data on premises, you can keep that data in sync with your uh, storage bucket in S3. So you can continue to ingest data on premises but start consuming uh, applications in the cloud. And, and a good thing is all these services are bi-directional. So uh, in some cases, what we found that our customers are ingesting the data in the cloud, but they want to have a copy of data on premises. So this architecture allows you to go back and forth between on premises and cloud in the most optimal way. Another advantage is that if, you, if your data is in the net of private storage, you can actually use the same data with multiple clouds. So unlike uh, if your data is, let's say, in S3, you can only consume the analytic services uh, in, Am uh, in Amazon, you can actually consume multiple uh, clouds in this particular architecture. And let me introduce you another uh, technology that we recently uh, announced. This is called in-place analytics. So what we are doing here is uh, we are allowing our customers to analyze data uh, using Hadoop uh, or Spark directly on NFS. So typically customers will move data from NFS to HDFS and in that process they will make three more copies of the data. 
But with this architecture, you do not have to make three additional copies, you can directly run analytics on the data that is uh, present on the NFS. Uh, so, because of that, you avoid multiple copies, you reduce your storage footprint. So, this is uh, also a cost effective solution. And since this is an IP protocol, uh, this allows you to de uh, deploy this model uh, in the hybrid cloud uh, way. And this is also certified by Hortonworks. So, this is fully supported solution by both NetApp and Hortonworks. Now, if you put those things together, uh, this is the hybrid cloud model for analytics where you can run, uh, let us say, Apache Spark or uh, Hadoop on premises directly on the data that is on NFS, or you can, direct, you can just consume analytics services in the cloud like uh, Databricks or EMR or HD Insight in the cloud and uh, point those services to the data that is uh, on NPS. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, you can uh, move the data uh, back and forth. You can uh, consume data in cloud and move the data back on premises. So, you can have a backup or DR of your analytic service uh, on premises. And then the last point uh, I want to highlight that we actually work very closely with Hortonworks and we uh, thoroughly validated this configuration with the HDP platform. So, now uh, uh, it is fully supported uh, by Hortonworks and NetApp uh, going forward. Thanks, John. So, so this this is an example like you know if you're talking to your enterprise customer, you can start like across the bottom. So, at an enterprise customer already has NetApp, data is already there. It's already on on tap. So, it's, it's a production environment. And typically, what you'll find is you'll find there's a DR and backup environment for that as well. That's mirroring and managing that production environment. You walk into an enterprise, you'll probably see that everywhere. Then if you look at how can I start the analytics environment with that enterprise, I've got several different paths. One of them is I could just take a snapshot copy of data sets off my backup DR and create a, a, a analytics a data sandbox or a particular application side and then connect it to the analytics cluster. And what allows you to do that is the NFS connector. And the NFS connector is a soft connect between analytics cluster and the NFS environment at NetApp. So that data doesn't actually have to move. It actually just can be accessed through NFS. Or if you have an enterprise that says, what I really want to do is I want to start out in a colo, like Equinix is an example. I want to put private storage out there, which is a copy of my production that I may use for DR backup, and I may not have to buy that. I could buy that from Equinix as a, a rental or a pay per use then I've got that capability that sits out in Equinix, and then I say, well, gee, what I really want to do is also spin up analytics in a hybrid cloud. So I can spin up a Horton analytics cluster in a, a Amazon or Azure or what have you, and then that has a pipe via cloud on tap into that NetApp private storage. So you've got the capability to say, where do you want to start? You know, you can start on-prem, you can start in a colo, you can start in the hybrid cloud, but you're not isolating those particular environments. And you're helping your enterprise customers manage the complexity, manage the data movement and replication, and have cloud integration. And we're, we're pretty excited to be able to do this with Horton because what this allows them and companies like you or developers like you, if you find customers that are pretty big NetApp customers, you have a way to get them into analytics real quickly. And you can have a way with Horton with them not requiring to move their data all around and get these things started pretty quickly and right away. And this is a kind of a little different way of thinking about it. So if you sort of think about this way, which is linear, linear, if you kind of think about what that was, that's node-centric. You start putting nodes in place and you have data silos. It's, the data is outside, it's not really integrated into the enterprise that you're serving and developing for, and it's stepwise and sequential. So you do one project, another project, another project, another project, and then you figure out, how do, how do I integrate those? Whereas if you take a parallel approach, it's more associated with a data-centric type of a view. You're looking where the data is, where the data exists now, where more data you want to generate, and thinking about what, what's the currency. I know some of the speakers talk about data as currency, data capital. That's what you're being able to use from a data centric approach. And then again, it's inside, it's not outside. So it's inside the environment, it's inside the enterprise. It may be inside particular infrastructures that are there already, 
and you have the ability to go and mine that data and use a match and move paradigm. And this is more about kind of the way NoSQL databases and other things use match move instead of parallel sequential processing. So if you start thinking about your data designs in a different way, especially when you're going to enterprises, then you have a way to bring value to the enterprises and help them get started on their data analytics projects, have the connection to be able to use that data, and then have the software capability to move, match, and scale. So, I'll open up, I, I, I appreciate you ever, everyone stay on Thursday, late in the <laughs> afternoon when the whole uh, booth and everything got torn down, so thank you for coming. And now, if there's questions, I'd like to open it up for some Q&A, if you have any. If not, thank you very much for your uh, kind attention and hanging around. And I hope the conference was good for you. It was good for me. It was good, it was good the way you see a lot of these things coming together. So thanks a lot. Thanks for your time. Thank you.